Good afternoon. I'm Councilmember Adenick Miller, and I am the Chair of the Committee on Civil Service and Labor. Today we'll be hearing and voting on an important resolution, resolution number 897, calling on Congress to pass and the President to sign the Never Forget Zadroga, Pfeiffer, Alvarez, Permanent Authorization of September 11 Victim Compensation Fund Act, which will fully fund and finance the Victim Compensation Fund and make it permanent. This legislation has the full support of myself, and I, and I am proud to sponsor it along with my colleague, Margaret Chen. I would like to acknowledge those of colleagues that have joined us here today, members of the committee, uh, Council Member Adams, Council Member King, and Council Member Danny Drum. The plain and simple reason that we are here today is because the 9-11 Victim Compensation Fund is rapidly running out of money. Nearly $5 billion in benefits have been awarded out of the $7.3 million fund. Absent any new funding, the general master of the fund earlier this year said that the existing claims that were submitted by February of this year will be paid at the rate of 50% of their value. New claims filed after February will be paid at only 30% of their value. In response to this crisis, 9-11 advocates and members of Congress band together to take action and work together on proposed legislation to remedy this situation. House Bill 1327 and Senate Bill 546 would fully finance the fund and extend its authorization until 2092, essentially, essentially making this bill permanent. The number of newly diagnosed illnesses among 9-11 victims has dramatically increased year after year, and the number of people who have died from 9-11 health conditions will soon surpass the number of actual people killed during the 9-11 tragedy. The federal legislation is desperately needed to ensure that those who are promised and those who, that they will be taken care of and their family are compensated and that they have the necessary peace of mind. Just last week, Kevin Nolan, Richard Driscoll became number 199 and 200 member of the New York City Fire Department to die from 9-11 related illnesses. And they were joined by retired Sergeant Thomas Finnessy of the NYPD who passed last Friday. Resolution 897 calls upon Washington to act and pass le this legislation. The House of Representatives passed their bill overwhelmingly by 402 to 12 earlier this month. The Senate has committed to a vote on this bill this week. This committee, along with the Committee on Health, held he hearings this past December on the state of health of 9-11 survivors. We were heard from many witnesses on that day on the importance of the Victims' Compensation Fund and how essential it is and how necessary this funding is to meet the needs of those who have filed claims. This federally funded program does just that. I look forward to passing this resolution out of committee and sending it to the full body for the voice of the body to be held on this important issue on the record. I'd like to thank my Chief of Staff, uh, Ali Rasulnajad, Brandon Clark, Joseph Goldblum, Council Staff, Nazette, Kevin, Kendall, and Elizabeth. And I would now like to turn it over to my colleague and sponsor of this fine legislation, Council Member Margaret Chen. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I want to thank the Chair of the Committee on Civil Service and Labor, Council Member Miller, for allowing me to say a few words about our joint resolution. Council Resolution 897 calls on our nation's leader to permanently authorize the 9-11 Victim Compensation Fund. There are roughly 90,000 survivors and first responders who are eligible for this fund. They live in every state of the nation. They are teachers, firefighters, police officers, medics, and they sacrifice, deserve to be honored. With the fund set to expire this year, our country is dangerously close to failing these American heroes. Sadly for FDNY, firefighter Richard Drissel and Detective Christopher Cranson and Luis G. 
Alvarez, it is too late. When so many of their fellow New Yorkers watched horrified as the World Trade Center burned, these men bravely ran into the wreckage and worked tirelessly during the weeks following the attacks. Unfortunately, certain members of Congress would rather put politics over people, keeping relief for heroes like Richard, Chris, and Lewis back in the gridlock. I urge the committee to vote yes on Resolution 897 and urge Congress to pass Senator Kristen Gillibrand and Congresswoman Carolyn Maloney's Never Forget the Heroes Act to permanently authorize the 9-11 Victim Compensation Fund through 2092. As the member of the legislative body of New York City, it is our moral duty to demand that our country delivers on its commitment to these survivors. And I thank Chair Miller for his partnership on this resolution, and I look forward to the passage. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Chen. Thank you for your leadership uh, on this legislation. It has been ongoing, it's not been easy, and, and the council is just trying to do its part in ensuring that our heroes and sheroes who have protected us in our time of need are properly compensated for them, not just them, but their families. I'd also like to recognize my colleagues to the left, Councilmember Moyer, Councilmember Lewis, and Councilmember Orrich. With that, uh, we do have witnesses to testify today. Okay. The first panel, only panel, Kimberly Flynn. We will hear from Kimberly Flynn. Thank you. Thank you, Chair Miller. I'm sorry, sir. Please state your name for the oh, record and I am, go ahead with your I testimony. am Kimberly Flynn. I am testifying as chair of the World Trade Center Health Program Survivor Steering Committee. And I thank the committee. I thank Chair Miller and I thank uh, Councilwoman Margaret Chin also for her uh, strong advocacy over the years for the community. Uh, that was directly impacted by 9-11. Um, as chair of the World Trade Center Health Program Survivor Steering Committee, I want to express our full support uh, for the Council Rezo calling for the BCF to be made permanent and for all cuts to be restored. Survivors and responders would, of course, prefer to have their health back. Compensation is something which affords those whose health was permanently harmed at least some measure of justice and peace of mind and time as has been so eloquently observed by John Feel and John Stewart in the past few weeks. We are so grateful to our brothers and sisters in the responder community for leading the fight for a permanent BCF. What is the Survivor Steering Committee? The James Adroga 9-11 Health and Compensation Act, in addition to federalizing the health program and reopening the VCF, created two stakeholder-based steering committees which advise the World Trade Center Health Program. One is the Responder Steering Committee and the other is the Survivor Steering Committee, which advises the program on meeting the 9-11 health needs of residents, students, and area workers whose health was harmed by exposures to the World Trade Center disaster. We are stakeholders. Our goal and our duty continues to be to make the Zadroga law work as well as it can for survivors. Like responders, we too are seeing cancers arriving earlier and in greater numbers than national statistics predict, rare cancers, and cancers that are unusually aggressive. Though 9-11 illnesses and deaths among survivors are not in the headlines, the survivor community is suffering as well, and I'd like to mark the passing away of longtime community board one member, Tom Goodkind, um, which was a devastating loss to the community. As the council knows, this toxic legacy is not just the result of 9-11, but also a direct result of the federal government's failures to protect the health of New Yorkers, as well as the heroic responders who came to our rescue. 
government agencies not only lied about the safety of the area, not only failed to provide a science-based cleanup of downtown buildings, they also spent years actively and aggressively disconnecting the dots between people's toxic WTC exposures and the health impacts caused by breathing in the dust and smoke. For at least a decade, city hall and city agencies participated in denying the dangers. As a result, survivors still may not know that they are eligible for Zadroga benefits because they do not link their illnesses to 9-11. This is especially an issue for people who were exposed as children. We are aware that this committee has heard testimony calling for letters to be sent to those attending schools in Lower Manhattan on 9-11, notifying them that they may be eligible for benefits. I can assure this committee that three such rounds of letters have been sent in the past, two by the city. Unfortunately, enrollments in the World Trade Center Health Program increased very little. Our, our contention is that, you know, this is, these are one-off efforts, and people don't pay attention to the information until they actually need it, i.e., until they're sick. Um, the Survivor Steering Committee has been working with the World Trade Center Health Program to arrive at a much more comprehensive approach. We have gained agreement for the program to foot the bill for the creation of a new study cohort of New York City's public school alums. The Department of Education is on board and has begun to provide information to the World Trade Center Health Registry, which is housed in the New York City Department of Health. The registry has begun the work of contact tracing because, of course, many former students are no longer at their former addresses. The value of this project is twofold. Number one, former students will be enrolled in a registry. Like the World Trade Center Health Registry, they will be in ongoing contact with people who can answer their questions, provide them with updates, and if they develop 9-11 related conditions, link them to their Zadroga benefits. So they, they're going to be in the pipeline going forward. Two, this registry will be the basis for a study cohort. The hope is that longitudinal study of a large number of people exposed as children will help fill the long-standing knowledge gaps about how the WTC disaster has affected the physical health of those who experienced it as children. Right now, the World Trade Center Health Program's research knowledge is based almost entirely on a population of adults. As the past 25 years of pediatric environmental medicine has made clear, children are not just little adults. For one thing, the fact that they are still developing means that they are far more vulnerable to harm from environmental exposures. It stands to reason that the unprecedented toxic exposures of 9-11 had the potential to hurt their health in some ways that are different than adults. We all need to know what is happening to this group over the long term. And remember that the World Trade Center Health Program can only add new conditions for care when there is sufficient research evidence. And the VCF will only compensate for physical conditions certified by the World Trade Center Health Program. Lacking the research evidence will block these survivors, these young adult survivors, access to Zadroga benefits that they need and deserve. And this is a grave injustice that we all have to prevent. We as SSC would like an opportunity to discuss the ways in which the council can help this effort as well as others. Once the VCF extension is passed and signed, God willing, <laughs> We will all breathe a deep collective sigh of relief. You will hear that nowhere more loudly than in Lower Manhattan. Then we, as a survivor committee, will go back to the job of ensuring that survivors understand and can access their Zadroga benefits. And we call on the council to help. And we would be so grateful for your help. Thank you. Thank you very much uh, for your testimony and, and, and just to reiterate that um, the council, uh, we had a, the opportunity to, to uh, jointly chair with uh, the health committee um, last year a uh, hearing that attempted to capture the emerging universe of folks that have been impacted by that, particularly uh, students and uh, teachers certainly working with the UFT and uh, that body. And, and so the work is ongoing. 
this council, this committee is absolutely committed to that um, and making sure that all those that are impacted uh, are properly uh, compensated and that they have access to uh, health care and uh, all the things that, that the, um, the Victims' Compensation Fund will allow. So thank you so much for thank your testimony. You. Thank you. Um, any questions? Anyone want to make a statement? Oh, you can save that for, for, for your vote. Mm -hmm. Okay. So thank you. Thank you, Chairman. William? Can the uh, clerk call the roll, please? William Martin Committee, Clerk Roll Call Vote Committee on Civil Service and Labor, Resolution 897A, Chair Miller. Proudly aye. Drum. Aye. King. Just like to make a statement. First, I want to thank Chair Miller and Councilwoman Chen for this resolution. As a son of a veteran, um, many New Yorkers run away from a crisis. And when 9-11 hit, many of our good men and women and their families are still feeling the effects of their family members running towards this emergency. Donald Trump said in his campaign he wanted to make America great. Well, this is your opportunity to do the right thing by all Americans who suffered nine, from 9-11, all across America who came to join the fight to save this country. There's no way to play politics with this anymore. The United States being one of the most financially rich com um, countries on, yeah, company and countries on this planet has the power to do what they can do to make sure that Americans and New Yorkers are healthier and their offspring. So I proudly vote on and I thank you. I'm looking forward to this getting signed at a higher level so the funding can be put in this fund so our Americans can be okay. Thank you. Adams. I vote aye. Moya. Aye. Lewis. Aye. Ulrich. Aye. By a vote of seven in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstentions, item has been adopted by the committee. I want, yeah, I just want to make sure everybody who had an opportunity to vote voted, but I want to thank my colleagues for coming out and uh, voting and hearing uh, this important issue. Um, we, as we know, that this is a very time sensitive. Uh, it is my hopes and the hopes of folks around here that the Senate will take this up in the next day or two and that it will get passed and that the belief that these folks are so deserving of what will happen. So. Thank you to everyone that came out. Thank you for your testimony. Uh, this hearing is now adjourned.